Okay, this is the main screen. These design tips are good, so do take the time to go through these and read them. Um, I'm going to do create a new bridge design. And this is your challenge to span the river. Number one, to ensure that the bridge can carry its own weight plus the weight of a standard truck loading and to keep the cost of the project as low as possible. So it keeps track of the cost down here. Click on Next. Are you participating in a local bridge design contest? Click Yes. Um, click on Next. Okay, you have about 98 different configurations to choose from. I can have a deck elevation at 24 meters such as the one shown right here or I can lower the deck by excavating each of the approaches however my site cost goes up so um, you know back to 24 meters my site cost is about 62 grand if I want to have a lower bridge which makes my bridge span a little bit less which might make my bridge cheaper I pay for it in site costs, so I just added, you know, whatever that is in site costs, 15 grand extra in, um, in excavating the two approaches. If I go even lower than that, you know, my site cost keeps going up, but presumably I'm going to make up for that somehow by having a shorter bridge. And if I want to run a pier up from the bottom you know that pier doesn't have to be quite as long so here I can select a pier and uh, you know later on I can add steel and build this up to support the bridge span and the lower I go obviously with the bridge deck you know way down here to eight meters I've got a real short bridge you know if I want to use a center pier now that pier doesn't have to be as long but I've got to move all this mountain of you know, um, material at each bridge approach. So my site cost goes up. So that's one thing you can play with um, is the uh, elevation of the deck. Um, again, you can have no pier at all or, or stick a pier in the middle like that. You can also tell it how high, you know, how high you want the concrete pier to go before you start adding steel to it. A real high pier is going to cost more. You see my cost just went down there. 16 meters, my cost goes down another three grand or whatever. So that gives me another thing I can play with there. And then cable anchorages. I can add one cable anchorage right there from which I can, you know, uh, string, you know, I can I can build steel here and then I can anchor cable from there to the top of this and then stretch it out over the span like that or I can have one at each uh, end of the bridge so presumably that's adding another roughly three grand I guess to uh, build that uh, cable anchorage at each end of the bridge so your cable doesn't pull out of the ground so you can click on this little down arrow here and this will give you a breakdown of your site cost well actually of all your costs <clears throat> uh, the deck cost okay with bridge designer the deck consists of um, of concrete topped with a thin you know top layer of of asphalt basically um, it's my excavation cost is zero dollars in this case because I haven't excavated either approach and let's see my abutments in bridge lingo these are the abutments there's one there one there they're typically made out of concrete they have to have footings so they cost money so this is telling me it's fifty five hundred dollars per abutment um, the pier would be the thing coming up from the bottom it has to be you know anchored to the bottom of this riverbed with pilings or whatever and then a concrete pier has to stick up so it costs money and the anchorage so this just gives me a breakdown for example 
if I went with, you know, <clears throat> some excavation, it's going to show up down here as $36,000 and so forth. I can add a pier. Now that shows up. So that keeps track of my total. So let's just say, uh, I'm going to, just for demonstration purposes here, keep it very, very simple. Click on Next. All right, so do you want to use medium strength concrete for the basic deck material? Um, you know, 0.23 meters is going to be, what, about 10 inches thick, roughly speaking. I'm just speaking in round numbers here. Or you can use a high strength concrete. See, my site cost just went up. Medium strength was 63,000. High strength concrete. Just added, you know, a little over four thousand dollars, but my bridge would be lighter because that's only six inches thick. 150 millimeters is roughly about six inches. So this gets thinner. See, when I click on that, boom, that just shows up a little thicker right there. So that's the trade-off there. Medium strength concrete has to be thicker, therefore my bridge weighs more but it's cheaper to begin with. So then I can use either one 480 kilonewton truck or two 225 kilonewton. A newton is approximately a quarter of a pound, roughly speaking. So that's about, what, 120,000 pound load, including the tractor. I guess that represents, you know, a fully loaded highway truck. These would be smaller trucks but um, evidently it needs to support two of them. Okay, so I'm just going to click on those two, click Next. All right, you can use a template to make your job easier if you want. So these are the various templates, you know, that you can select if you want to make your job easier. I happen to like the None option because I want to design it myself. Um, and even if I selected that one right there, I, I can drag these around. They're not fixed in, in place. This is just a, a template to help you get started. So I'm going to click on None, click Next. Uh, okay, put your name in there. And uh, let's see, the last design I did was, I think, Design 2. So let's pick 3 for this one. And Next. And this just, you know, read all this. This shows you how to do it. Um, and click on Finish. Okay, here's your screen. And this particular tool here is the Joint Tool. So, uh, come up here, line up those crosshairs, and start adding joints for truss members. Um, every time I do that, my cost goes up, as you can see there. It just jumped up, I think, $1,000 each. Um, when I have a number of those placed, then, uh, you know, I can go to the next step, which is adding the steel members themselves. And keep in mind, I can put these uh, joints way up high, way up here. I can put them lower, so there is flexibility there. To draw the actual joints, or the actual members, just go like that. Now that's a solid bar of carbon steel, 140 millimeters um, in cross section, and so what's that, about a uh, little bit less than six inches, I guess. Um, this tells you exactly what it is over here. It's 7.21 meters long. This gives you more information. The material is carbon steel. It gives you the yield stress, you know, which you can think of as the tensile, tensile strength. Gives you the modulus of elasticity, the density. Gives you a whole bunch of information, as well as the unit cost per running meter. So you can really drill down and get very detailed here. Um, so you just simply start putting your members on like this any way you want and uh, as you add them it just keeps adding it to the member list the, the ones I've placed so far are solid bar and they're and they're this size alright so my other options are to use a hollow tube 
in hollow tube carbon steel is uh, more efficient under a compressive load. It's better at compression because it's hollow. It doesn't weigh as much <clears throat> and it doesn't cost as much. So for your compressive members, you typically would want to use a hollow tube. For your tensile members, members that are under tension, you would want to normally use a solid bar, but it's up to you. So um, the hollow tube, I believe, um, ends up being a different shade. Yeah, it's a little bit lighter gray. And um, so this would be the uh, the two sides are 140 millimeters each and the thickness of the material would be seven millimeters. I think it shows a picture here. So for member, let me click on this and click on the member. So for member 12, right here, member 12, on the member list, I'm right there, keeps track of each individual member by number. So member 12, you know, you've got a square cross-section hollow tube, 140 millimeters is in round numbers, you know, what, five and a half inches, and seven millimeters thick. There's about three millimeters per quarter inch, per, per eighth inch, about three millimeters per eighth inch is one way to remember it. So that's approximately a quarter inch material, about five and a half inches on each side. You know, in the context of this bridge, this thing is seven meters long. It's, it's well over 20 feet long. It's probably 25 feet long. It's carrying a heavy bridge. So this is somewhat wimpy, okay? So uh, you can enlarge that by doing that or by using these little buttons here. Okay, so you go ahead and complete your bridge and let me pull up one that I just did here, right here, show you what that looks like. And I'm just going to say no there to save time. This is a design <clears throat> I did earlier. It's not optimized at all. The cost is really high, $469,000. Um, I just slapped it together very quickly so it would carry the load. But, you know, you can click on each uh, member. Let's go to the member list here. Member 34 is down here, and it tells me what it is. It's carbon steel. It's tubing. It's 340 millimeters on a side. Uh, what, what would that be? Maybe 14 inches almost. <clears throat> 300 millimeters is about uh, 12 inches. So it's a pretty sizable piece. Four meters in length. And uh, this gives you more information over here. So I can use carbon steel. I can use a high strength, low alloy steel or a quenched and tempered steel. Each one of these adds cost, but gives me a stronger member with different strength properties. So you could go through and design and mix any combination of these materials, any combination of configuration, you know, solid bar or hollow tube, any size, they can be sort of uniform like I've done across the top of this bridge with all these being the same size and they're all, all hollow, whereas these, I can't remember if they're all the same size or not, but they're all solid bar. Let's see, that's 140 by 140. Yeah. Looks like I made them all the 140 by 140. So I made them all uniform. You can differ them all as uh, the need arises. So when you're done with the bridge design, click on this button right here and it'll run an animation. And a truck will come along and red means compression and, and the blue means tension. And uh, you can just keep replaying it. You can slow it down like this under the view uh, tab. Um, you know, you can, you can add your animation controls. Um, and, you know, just take a few minutes and go through these different options. Um, you can print reports. Um, 
you can go back, let me go back to the design mode here. You can um, have coarse drawing grid. So let's say I was going to add another joint tool up here, for example. And you see how far it jumps with every, uh, every possible point of placement? Well, if you click on Fine Drawing Grid, it gives me many, many more choices. And so I like to put it on Fine myself. Um, okay, you can uh, show or hide. Just take a few minutes and, and go, okay, this is a good one. The Alignment Grids give you a way to keep your bridge symmetrical. So for example, if I wanted to place some members in here and keep it symmetrical, I would line them up over here. So that's just a way to keep it symmetrical. Um, this horizontal one, I would guess, is just an aid for you to um, you know, keep things all lined up. So you can use that if you want. Uh, Again, you can print all this stuff. Um, all right, this gives you detailed information. What I did is I clicked on, on this button right here, load test results. It lists each member in the bridge, the materials, the configuration, size, and it tells me exactly how you know, oversized or undersized the member is. So for example, member number one, which I don't remember what it is on this bridge because I can't remember what side I started on, but member number one, let's see if it tells me. I guess not. Anyway, um, is carrying approximately uh, 1361 tension and the strength, the allowable strength of that member is much, much larger. So I could save money by fine-tuning that. That's what you want to do after you get your basic bridge design is go through here and try to match all of these a little, a little more closely. I've got a lot of wasted material. If it's a compression member, you look in this column. If it's a tension member, you look in that. When you're building your bridge, and you run a load test and it fails the first few times, you'll see this pop up with uh, the members that failed will be highlighted in different colors. I think they're highlighted in red. And um, you'll have some notes over here and you'll be able to diagnose exactly what's wrong with that member and which uh, ones you need to enlarge or change. So that's basically how it works, and uh, again, that's the load test. Bring in my animation controls, and you can slow it down so you can see what's happening. So this bridge works. It does carry the load, but it is very expensive at 469000